morning. Thursday the 26th of March and it's nine o'clock in the morning. Very early start for me but there again Jonathan phoned me this morning and it's 10 o'clock over there for him so um, um, I thought I'd get on and uh, put the next uh, part two version of our interview onto the net today. Um, so sit back and enjoy and um, if you missed part one go and have a quick look at it and here is part two. Cheers. I think it's something that um, maybe one of your your training sessions could you, you handle quite quite nicely, particularly if you've already gone through this now with um, um, your last client. It's perhaps it is. There's actually quite a lot of ground I noticed that I've already covered in previous user group meetings. Yeah. So things like zone of visual influence, creating a solar study. I use um, spaces for that. I think. Mm. Um, you know, massing models I've used before. So there's, so there's quite a lot of stuff that's actually out there already written or already part of my online training, if you like. Um, and all it means is a, a need, sorry, all we really need is a means of bringing all this together um, into a coherent plan. Uh, but I was up there for two and a half days doing nothing but teaching them all the 3D stuff, you know, walls, doors and windows. Yeah roofs all that sort of complex stuff and that was quite a long period of time to on, take all that was that on um a refurb or was that completely new projects um that you, project was brand new i think yeah but i still i still use 3d for refurbs yeah i, I that's the one thing i find quite difficult going into 3d on a refurb job um purely because sometimes you just don't know what's there and you're having to draw blind um, and 3D really demands just a little bit more information than that. Well, there's a, there's, don't forget there's halfway in between. Mm. And that is that you use a, a crude 3D model to get the form of the building without the detail. Yeah. And then you use 2D on top of that to flesh, flesh out the detail. Yeah. Uh, which is what I've done on a recent refurbishment job where the windows were very complex. So I used the um, Australian Wind Door Manager to make my complex windows. But the facings were quite unusual, the, the way that the, the actual facings on the windows worked. So I didn't worry about it. I just used the 3D to do what it could do quickly and then 2D drawing on top to do what I could do quickly there. Excellent. So it was, uh, it was a, a bit of both. And yeah. I think you really need to have enough skill to be flexible like that where you do do a bit of both. Yeah. Just changing the subject completely. Um, you know, I've had this problem today with um, exporting into DWG, which thanks very much. I um, I managed to solve with with your help there. It worked very well. Yeah, you're most strange. Welcome. It's strange what a little tiny tick will do. Um, I know of a couple in New Zealand that use Vectorworks, but not a. I I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world. Um, and my gut feeling is probably that a lot of those engineers are like your one that is using AutoCAD because that's what they've used. Mm. I think what the challenge is that because some people don't come to the regular training that, that I that I run, that they then are working in a vacuum. So they don't know what the rest of the world's using for uh, drawing, or they don't know what Vectorworks is able to do to communicate to the rest of the world. Mm. And it seems a shame that there's there is so much information available, but you can you know I can give it away to people that that talk to me. For example, you you emailed me, and I was able to help you out with that. But if you didn't email me, in other words, if you're working in a vacuum, you wouldn't know that I was here or to help, and you wouldn't be able to ask the question to to find the answer. Yeah. And so there are community situations around. There's um, Vectorworks run their own community board, which you could have posted your question to. Um, there are chat lists that you can belong to. There's LinkedIn and there's, uh, you know, there are various groups around the world. There's Architosh has got their own technical yeah. board for, or Excellent. chat board for Vectorworks. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all these other places you can go to. I do know some architects that have big problems dealing with their uh, export of DWG. And it's really because Vectorworks works in a way that AutoCAD doesn't. And if you draw Vectorworks in the way that Vectorworks is really quick, when you export to, a, to a, an architect or an engineer, you might actually be exporting stuff that actually looks pretty awful. Yeah. Yeah. I and so one of, the, 
So this came up uh, in my training session I was at last week where I actually spelt out to them that you can't do some of the tricks that Vectorworks does. You know, the, you know the, um, you probably do it when you're detailing like I do, that is you draw a white square over something you want to hide. Yes. Okay, and when you export that, that then becomes visible in AutoCAD. All the stuff that you were hiding is now visible in AutoCAD. And you have to know that that happens, and you have to get rid of the stuff behind your white square. You have to change some of your tricks mm -hmm. if you know you're going to give your information to another person. Mm -hmm. So you either have to use classes better, because classes will actually export quite well, and turn those classes invisible and then export it, or, mm -hmm. um, or draw in a rather crude AutoCAD way. Okay. What's in the future, John? What have you got planned for the next one? <laughs> Come on, well, the you're next on the user spot group now. or, or uh, well, the next user group is actually going to be about layers, classes, design Excellent. layer viewports, sheet layer viewports, and sheet layers. I, I thought most people would would cover this in the user group before, but it appears that it still needs to be covered again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a complete house project with notes and dimensions and you know a, a roof framing and floor framing and bracing and floor finishes, electrical, the whole lot, and then go through step by step how you then break that up to create your drawings. Excellent. Uh, and I think that. I might also, if I've got time, what I'll also do is make sure that there are some problems in those drawings so that um, when you look at the drawings, there's some issues that are, that are challenging, things that shouldn't be there are there, how do you find those things and, and remove them? Yeah, excellent. I'll look so forward that's, to that. that's what I'm looking forward to. Excellent. I thought you were going to ask me what, I'm, what sort of manuals am I planning for the future <laughs> or, or how am I going to implement my online training in a better way? No, um, I can see the online training is, is evolving because it must be new. I don't know anybody else is doing this at all. I mean, I was supposed to be on a, tra on a, on a training course today um, with uh, Z Corp and they were doing 3D printing. Um, but they're doing an online thing, but it was complicated to get into, very complicated. So um, I didn't get back from my client meet until quite late, so I went on to it and looked at it later. But it still was just um, a slideshow. It wasn't the interaction that I was expecting. Well, what I've started doing is I, I for a long time I've been running face-to-face -face training. That is, I, I, I get a number of people together. We rent a room in a, in a town like Auckland or Wellington, New Zealand, and we bring all our computers together and I present my, you know, I get my projector and I project up on the wall and this is what we're going to do and they'll walk around the room watching everyone do it. And those courses have worked very well except there's a huge environmental cost. You know, everybody has to travel, I have to fly, uh, we have to rent a room, you know, we, we have to have the air conditioning going. There's just a huge environmental cost. What I've started doing is running those classes online. So we do an hour at a time, I get no more than three or four people together, so it's quite personal. Um, we then arrange the times, and everybody joins my go-to meeting. And if I'm covering something which is not in one of my manuals already, then I'll capture my screen and send it to those people that were part of that training. So the training follows the basic structure of one of my manuals, but it's flexible enough where people say, oh, but what if this happens? Or, or you know, in my situation, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me just start my screen capture capture the screen, this is what you should do, blah, 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 and then I process that movie and then I email it to the people that belong to that course. So we have the ability to create courses where I've had, for example, um, I had a, a woman from Melbourne and uh, she was online with a landscaper from South, South Island of New Zealand. So they were nowhere near the same city. Um, and so it gives me that flexibility to run short courses, to run uh, courses that are based on my training manuals, or to, um, in this situation, to, to be even more flexible than that, you know, actually answer their questions. Excellent. Well, I look forward to the new, uh, the new training thing coming out. That sounds really good.